Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be flipping through my 2019 bullet journal. To start off with, here is my index. This notebook that I'm using, which is a Dingbats notebook, has a pre-printed index. As you can see, I didn't end up filling all the lines, which is why in my 2020 bullet journal, which did not have a pre-printed index, I used a lot fewer pages to set up my index. Now here is my main title page for 2019. This first spread has my 2018 reflection and some drawings for nine things that I'm looking forward to. I'm not a big fan of trying to do reflective or journaling type writing in a constrained box like this because it makes me feel like I have to limit what I'm saying and cut everything down. So in the middle of the year, I ended up switching to a journal journal instead of trying to put journal-y type thoughts in my bullet journal. If you'd like to know more about my actual journal, then let me know and I might make a video about it. The next spread after this, first I have my nine goals for 2019, which I ended up not really referring back to as often as I would have liked to. Let's see, I ended up accomplishing, I'd say, four of these nine goals. Next, I have this where I tried to set myself a daily routine, but once again, once I made this, I really didn't go back and look at it at all, and I never really did end up following through on all of these things, unfortunately. Since I didn't find the spread particularly effective, I removed it from my 2020 setup. This next spread has two of my favorite setups. This one is for my year in pixels, in which I track my mood for each day based on these colors. It was really helpful for me to, at the end of each day, just think about how I was feeling and actually think about my emotions instead of just going to sleep and not thinking about them, which is not really great for my mental health. And these ones are empty just because I'm currently filming this on the 26th. Next, this one is for the books I read this year. As you may have seen in my 2019 Plan With Me video, I drew all of these books as a template beforehand, and then as I read each book, I just colored them in with a highlighter color in the color of the book cover, and then wrote the title. This one, my last replace spread, was also very helpful, and I ended up using and referring to it quite a lot. The way this works is I keep track of when I've replaced certain items that need to be replaced, as you can see, I have my toothbrush, contacts, and contact case. This way I know at a glance when I last replaced it so that once the recommended time frame has passed, I will replace it again. And then this is my list of video ideas. Most of these are going to be transferred over to my 2020 video ideas setup. And this, following my video ideas, is my video plan for the year. This is my finance tracker. Later on, I put another finance tracker in my August spread because I had filled it up. And now here are my monthly grids. What I did in these is I kept track of major events and any assignments that were coming up in a month that was not the month I had already done a monthly setup for. For example, if I got news of a certain event in March, but it was happening in May, then I would just add it to this grid. Additionally, I scheduled tasks for each week on this margin on the side. In general, you can see that whenever I didn't have that much going on, this was fairly empty and not used as much. And then as academic and extracurriculars picked up, I started filling out more tasks and events. Now here is what I use to plan for my winter break in the holiday season from 2018 to 2019. And then this is my January setup. Towards the beginning of the year, as you can see here, I set up these spreads for me to look at my goals from the 9 for 2019 spread that you saw earlier. I reflected on the progress I had made and any changes I might need to make to better my ability to reach my goal. I found this really helpful at the beginning of the year when I still abided by my 2019 goals, but towards the middle of the year I decided that some of the goals were no longer relevant. 
Now here is a timeline I made for an approximate college application timeline, but this wasn't very helpful because when I made this timeline, it was spring before senior year, so I really had no idea how college apps worked. Here's where I planned out a trip I made to the East Coast, and this is a very cute setup. I would like to replicate this at some point. This is where I kept track of a strength training plan for track, and this was the packing list I made for that East Coast trip that I referred to earlier. And then this is how I designed my to-do lists for January. As you might know, I generally just have my monthly setups. And then I don't really have structured weekly planning, just to-do lists for every day that flow throughout. This is my February setup. I tried to have a weekly journal here as you can see, but I didn't really like this for the same reasons I wasn't a big fan of my 2018 reflection spread in that it's a very limited space, so I didn't feel like I could freely write down all of my thoughts, which essentially defeats the purpose of journaling. It was a good attempt though, and it helped me figure out what did not work for me, so thumbs up to that. This was another goal reflection spread, about the same as the one from January. And then here is how I set up my to-dos for February. This is my March setup. This is definitely one of my favorites. I really like this drawing I did and the overall minimal line setup. Heck yeah, thumbs up. This time I combined my journaling and goal reflection into one spread, which once again, not a big fan of because it felt really constrained as if I couldn't truly spill out all of my thoughts. And this is how I set up my to-do lists. I really like this layout and I'd like to try this again in my 2020 bullet journal. Here is another cross-training spread I set up. But one thing I noticed is that when I set up spreads like these where they're essentially a really long task list, I really need those circly check boxes that you might have seen here because if they aren't there, I feel like it's just a bunch of text that I can read instead of actually doing something. I need the check boxes to keep me accountable for some reason. This is a planning setup I made for writing all of the chapters of my book, Study With Me, which I will link in the cards and description if you haven't heard about Study With Me, my student guide to bullet journaling yet. This is my April setup. For April, I decided to do a purple cherry blossom inspired theme. You can tell that I just like plain black lines, which I'm a fan of one because they look really cool and two, they don't take very long at all to set up. I would definitely say I progress towards a more minimal style as my bullet journaling has evolved. Once again, replicating the March goal reflection setup and journaling setup. Okay, I haven't looked at this in a long time and it's pretty cool. I think these branches are very aesthetically pleasing and I found it relaxing at the end of each day to just draw a branch and just take a little bit of time to doodle. This is another spread I use to plan out my book writing process. The tasks I have to do for each chapter are essentially to write a draft, revise and edit a crap ton of times, take the example photos, and then edit and upload the photos. So as each one progressed, I just checked off each box. Oh, towards the end of this month, I just gave up on the drawings. Maybe I ran out of time or something. I don't know exactly what happened, but hopefully this can show to you that even people who post their bullet journals on the internet as an example of bullet journaling don't really do things perfectly all the time. So don't feel like you absolutely have to either. This is my May setup inspired by the Great Wave off Kanagawa. And it's all themed around quotes about turning 17 because this was the month of my 17th birthday. And then I tried to do a daily gratitude journaling thing, but I didn't really fill it out at all, as you can see. So for 2020, I decided to do weekly gratitude journaling because as I mentioned in my 2020 plan with me, I think trying to force myself to reflect more often than I actually have the free time and mental energy for is just counterproductive and makes me feel bad for not feeling something out rather than actually helping me to think about what I'm grateful for. So here you can see I completely fell off journaling in my bullet journal and decided 
to completely migrate myself over to my journaly journal. I should come up with a better name for that. Let's call it the messy journal. On this spread, I decided to reevaluate the nine goals I had set up at the very beginning of the year that I previously mentioned. But after I moved everything to this setup, I never looked back at this particular spread. So overall, my goals just kind of disappeared into the wind, never to be looked at again, unfortunately. So that's one thing I'd like to improve on in 2020. One new trick I developed in 2019 was using a post-it note for a task that moves throughout the days, if that makes sense, like a really big project where it has a list of multiple tasks that I need to check off, but I don't think it can be finished in one day. That way I can just peel off the post-it note and move it to whatever day I'm currently at so I can keep checking off those tasks without having to recopy every single item on that list. Here is a failed empty setup that I never really ended up using. This is my June setup. For this month, I had a pre-film list along with my regular video list since I was going to be away for quite a bit of the summer. So I needed to make sure to get some videos pre-filmed and queued up and uploaded before I went off and was not able to film videos. Okay, this is kind of wacky because I actually ended up finishing all of these tasks. So I want to just bubble them in so I feel better about having finished everything. But in June, I did not journal at all in my bullet journal. Here was my study plan for the SAT 2s that I was taking in August. I set it up for June and pretty much got it all done. Once again, I didn't finish bubbling in the bubbles even though I finished everything. So past me, I don't know what you were doing. Then in August, I decided to not stick to a regimented plan and just did practice whenever I had free time since school was starting to pick up, so I wasn't really sure when I'd have more time to practice. Another packing list. The great thing about keeping all my packing lists in my bullet journal is that whenever I need to write a new packing list, I can just flip back to my older ones and use those as a template. Here is my July setup, which seemed to be a fan favorite with lots of people recreating these cute little pineapples. I do really like this rainbow, almost technicolor disco look. And this is admittedly one of the cutest setups I've ever done. Look at all these pineapples, they're adorable. I only had two weeks at home in July, so I did a structured weekly setup instead of the normal mumbly jumbly to-do lists. These had a task list on the left side and then scheduled out tasks and events for each day on the right. This was a pretty effective setup and if I ever end up doing more structured weekly setups, I might replicate this look. Here is my August setup, which was inspired by Heather's. In this space, I intended to paste in some Polaroids, but I never ended up doing it because I normally put my Polaroids in my messy journal because to me it just makes more sense to have the photos in a space where I can also write down the memories associated with them rather than just isolated here. So that's one more thing I discovered that didn't really vibe with me. Here is my newer finance tracker to make more space since, as I previously mentioned, I ran out of space in the one I had set up at the beginning of the year. And then here are my to-do lists as I started school on the 14th. I also found it more helpful to have brain dumps with my to-do lists. You never know when you're gonna feel so overwhelmed that you need to brain dump, so it makes more sense to just have them in spots where they come up rather than trying to force them to all be at the beginning of the month. Here's my September setup, but once again, I didn't really check off my finished tasks, even though I finished this task. Don't know what I was doing at past self. Here as well, I just gave up on this habit tracker. One of my flaws is that I'm kind of all or nothing when it comes to these trackers. As soon as I forget to write something down for one day, like I probably forgot to track my habits on the 8th and then just gave up for the rest of the month. So that's not a great habit and I don't recommend you get into this habit because it's better to have 15 out of 30 days tracked instead of like four and then nothing. Tips from someone who messed up. 
these numbers signify each hour of each day. So seven is from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. So for each task, I estimate how long it'll take. Then I directly copy it into a time block. If you'd like to know more about scheduling your time as a productivity method, I will link a video about that in the cards and description. This is where I attempted to keep track of my supplements, but it wasn't really helpful because I ended up doing all of my supplement tracking on a Google Docs since that's where I was writing them anyway. Occasionally, I also took notes in my bullet journal. For example, in this particular weekend, I was revising my Common App essay, so I took some notes from internet sources and YouTube videos and stuff like that about what I could do. Then I would have my notes to refer to as I was writing them on this weekend. This is where I started drafting my senior year bucket list, which you might have seen the updated version in my 2020 plan with me. Here is my October setup for the Halloween season, one of my favorite seasons. Once again, why am I not checking things off when I get them done? In November, I made a vertical video tracker, which looks very nice, but I found it to be kind of a waste of space because I really do not need this much space to just write a few words and numbers. One pattern that I'm now noticing with my lack of bubbling in is that it's always the last week of the month. I think that might be because for all of these other weeks, I had to refer to this setup to know my plan for what I was going to be doing the next week. But for this last week, instead of flipping back to this page, I would have been flipping to my December setup. So one thing that might help that is if for each monthly plan with me, I also do a flip through of the previous month's spreads. That way I end up forcing myself to actually look at this again. This is my finals planning setup, which once again, why am I not checking things off? The world may never know, but I did get all of these things done without bubbling in the bubbles. So I guess it's not the end of the world. This is a different finals planning setup, which was my idealistic one month of studying for finals plan. But towards the middle of November, I started getting senioritis way too early. So I didn't really finish all of this stuff during these two weeks. Instead, I just rescheduled them into the two weeks leading up to finals. Here is another strength training plan I set up. In December, I allowed myself to kind of just get away with not finishing everything, which is why a lot of the bubbles are not filled in. Because in December, I was trying to recover from an injury, so I didn't want to physically push myself too hard if I just wasn't feeling it. And then here is my cute little December setup with my snowman. In my December plan with me video, I set up my tasks and these main goals for December. I think it was helpful to set these bigger goals or less concrete tasks in these ways without the checkboxes and then have actual smaller detailed plans in these checkbox formats for my weekly tasks. Then over here I have a 2019 reflection that's a little bit more structured than the 2018 one I have in the very front of this bullet journal. Instead of having it just be me trying to spill a bunch of thoughts, I have it as 10 books that I found most important to me this year, my top eight songs on Spotify, and some major milestones that happened. And then here are my to-do lists. This particular week I was vlogging my life for my YouTube channel, and I wanted to keep track of events that would be happening on each day or certain things that I wanted to make sure to get footage of. Since vlogging is actually quite hard, often when you're in the moment, you just don't remember that you are supposed to pull out the camera and record things. This was a giant brain dump spread. I took about half an hour at the very beginning of my winter break to just write down everything I wanted to get done for the break. Then whenever I moved one of these into my giant two week plan, I just crossed it out. This looks quite ugly, but it did the job and I found it really helpful and satisfying to just strike things out. 
here I just swatched a bunch of pens. These are some task lists for a few of the days where I had a lot more things to get done so I needed to make a more detailed list than just what's in this planning setup. But most of the days I've just been using these lists. And that is everything in my bullet journal. I hope you found this video inspiring and that you could learn from things that worked for me and things that didn't work for me. If you'd like to learn more about bullet journaling, I will link videos on screen and in the description, and I upload new videos every Monday. I also post photos of my bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquilt. See you next time!